Well, all right. Got about a minute, then we'll start up. All right, so, hey everybody, this is Rat Side number two. My name is Lanzer, and I've been a part of the community for nine years now, since beta, Plant Side 2. And right now, as I mentioned, Strat Side number two. So what is Strat Side? Strat Side is something I just came up with after doing the first one with Arshi. That first one is now in VOD and Twitch, but it is... It was a look at EG7 and how it influenced, factored into Rogue Planet games, Daybreak games, and Planet Side 2, and then what that meant for the community. And if you've seen anything about me over the years, you might have seen some Reddit posts, and my involvement with PSB, all that sorts of stuff. I've written a lot of gaming articles over the years, and many of them were different stuff <laughs> they were articles on service mash they were articles on things that that would help the game different sort of contributions and i made some reddit posts about that not too long ago kind of summarizing that over all the years and it got me thinking that well how do i want to contribute to the community modern day a lot different than what i used to do many years ago so i came up with this strat side i didn't really know how to piece everything I want to do together. I'm I'm not quite the personality streamer that Shock Tour is. I am more philosophical discussion based, but not near to the level that Deeg is. I'm more like business oriented, very much presentation interactive style. I wasn't sure how to fit all that together until recently, which Studio Beta ended up fixing all my stream problems. And then I decided uh, it was EG7 that thing with Arshi gave me the idea to, well, to do this, to give a, a structured, a loose structure of what I want to talk about. And then if there are any people in the chat or in the, the VODs that happen after this, then, you know, have a conversation, a discussion. Um, that's pretty much what this is. It's been a lot of time putting this together and yeah, I just noticed, uh, <laughs> I was uh, rehearsing a little bit. So here we are. Today, strat side number two is uh, strat side is going to be about strategic things, about business things, and then the different data. I like to bring a lot of data into the fold based on you know, observations, based on what we know. So today's Mar May 30th, and today we'll be talking the next Outfit Wars and how to think about its identity. Uh, the link is up there in the top left of the slide. You can go to that link. You can look at these slides as I'm going through them as well. And if you have any questions, put them, post them in the chat, and then I'll, I'll answer them as best I can. So why the next Outfit Wars? The reason why is because clearly the last Outfit Wars, it's been a major topic of conversation across the community. I 
I casted it with Arshi and Zulfur, the Connery gold match, and it was a lot of fun to watch. I even participated participated in it with the Devil Dogs um, before we were, I think, second, third bracket, and we got knocked out. But it was a lot of fun. It wasn't without its controversy, and there's been a lot of conversations surrounding it. I didn't really like a lot of what I was seeing in the conversation flow. It, and as we'll get into it, this is my approach to contributing to that conversation. So here's what we're going to go over today. Why this matters to you, the Plant Side 2 player, to us, the community. The next thing we're going to go over is the scope of the talk. We're going to go over what this talk is and what it isn't. And three, we'll go over some working definitions. So when I use these words, this is what I mean. Then we'll delve into the genre heat map, something I constructed after thinking and, and collaborating with some of the other content producers. Then we'll go into how that heat, my, heat map applies to Plant Side 2. Then we'll go over some player identity, how player identity figures into all of this. And then last but not least, we'll, I'll go over some tweaks and frame that within the context of everything we'll go over before that. Then we'll hit the summary, and then we'll go over things that I've done in the past, t recent talks they've had in the past, and then some upcoming talks that I'm going to have just like this one. Cool. And I just realized I didn't have the thing set up all the way. So that was the beginning slide I was talking about. Top left is where the link is. The next outfit war is how to think about its identity. And there's going to be some bugs. This is my first time doing it in a very long time. So there's going to be some things that catch and don't. And we'll just kind of see how it all goes. I really... I know what I want to talk about, and then it'll just be a matter of talking about it with other people. And here's the agenda I just went over. Now, first part, why this matters to a Planet Side 2 player. So the reason why it matters to a Planet Side 2 player is because Outfit Wars affects you whether you participate in it or not. Uh, at the end of the day, Outfit Wars takes from the, the regular player base, it, if you're only on live, then you notice it by the decrease in population while those events are going on. Uh, it, it affects the PS2 meta, how we talk about Planet Side 2, the things we think about when we think about Planet Side 2, and it takes up a lot of community talk space. And like it, like it is right now, Deeg has done no less than nine hours. The guy does, he's just, he's an animal. He's, he's great. I love Deeg. Uh, Shock Tour has talked about it. Arshi's talked about it. Uh, Sirius has talked about it. Rel's talked about it. Aflick, Kamikaze. Like there's uh, Commander Spock. There's been a lot of people who've talked about this, not to mention Reddit, YouTube. Just random conversations and, and different things you've seen. So it affects you. If you're a player, it affects you. The next thing is why it matters is during Outfit Wars, a lot of things happened. A lot of good things, a lot of things you might classify as bad or not particularly helpful. But there were some things that happened during Outfit Wars that divided the community. And that generated a lot of questions from that, which was, what do we think of fairness? How fair is a 1v1v1? What does it mean to play to win? Should we be playing to win? How do you make the most of a bad situation? What do you do when you're confronted with just an, an impossible task? And how closely should Outfit Wars reflect live? That's been... Yeah, it consumed the Planet Side 2 community for a, a really long time. And by a long time, I mean months. And we're only, what, three, four, five months out of that window? So... Uh, the, the third thing, why it matters to a Planet Side 2 player, is excuse me, the unspoken code of, conduct po code of conduct post by RHEL and other updates has caused a general amount of uncertainty about Outfit Wars, how to play in Outfit Wars, 
what to expect from Outfit Wars. It was it was a good inject, and but at the end of it, call it ambiguity, call it uncertainty, call it it's still an alpha. Who it's for and how it fits into Planet Side Two. From what I see of the the community, it's just not obvious. And I think Deeg put it best, the old Diegmeister. He said that multiple times, Outfit Wars is like a Rorschach test. Each person sees what they want to see. And if you're not familiar with the Rorschach test, you know, you're you're in a room and a scientist shows you a picture, like a, a, a blot picture, and you're supposed to tell them, the scientist, what you see. Like, oh, I see a pretty butterfly, or I see a truck. And that's a Rorschach test. And whenever I've seen a lot of people talk, comment, make content about Outfit Wars in response to, and in many cases while it was going on, you, you got a sense of that's what was really happening. People were coming at it from their own perspective of what Planet Side 2 is, and thus what Outfit Wars is. And now we're all reacting to each other because we now have this, this finite entity called Outfit Wars that we all have to interact with and thus interact with each other, just like we do on live. But on live, it's a lot easier to ignore or otherwise call it not have to deal with the perspective of other people because really you're only you're shooting them. They're on the other end of your barrel. But here in Outfit Wars, the, the microcosm is zoomed in to such a degree that you can't ignore the other team. 1v1v1, the actions of any one player magnifies, even, at, even though we're talking about 48s. So, yeah, that's why it matters to you. It, it affects you whether you participate, whether you play live or not. It affects you whether or not, uh, excuse me, it, a lot of things that happened during Outfit Wars divided the community because there was no clear answer on how to proceed. There really was no clear um, referee, so to speak. And when Rel offered his perspective, he clarified things with the unspoken code of conduct that caused a general amount of uncertainty that we're, we're still, the community is still waiting to, to hear more about. And that's not a dig at Rel. It really isn't. It's, it's just not obvious how to, how Outfit Wars it's into PS2. What's up, Gnome? <laughs> yeah. All right. So the next slide. Scope of the talk. Here's what this talk is. Strat Side 2 about the next Outfit Wars. And here's what it isn't. What it is is going to be ways to think about Outfit Wars. I think there's different things that you can consider having walked away from this. And it might change your perspective. It might not. It might, this really isn't here to convince you of anything, but to give you tools to talk about Outfit Wars. Where Deeg mentioned the Rorschach test, that was a really, if you zoom out from the discussion from all this stuff taking place, you can see that there are a lot of things taking, taking part, a lot of influencing factors, people coming at it from different angles. And that's what this, this talk is about, is to reveal what those angles are that way, you can be more aware, be more equipped. But here's what it isn't. I'm not going to talk about what happened much. That's been many other people have talked about it to much greater degree, at greater degree. Like I mentioned, Sirius, Arshi, Deeg. Deeg, like no less than nine hours, Deeg. Um, and Commander Spock. Like there's some, there have been some great, great discussions and, and thorough Picking a part of what happened. What also it isn't, it's it's not about where things went wrong. You're not gonna get a here's why I think things should improve, blah 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 blah. At the very, very end, there's one one slide about a a whole list of things that I've heard, uh, balance tweaks, quality of life tweaks. But this isn't gonna be about that. Um it's going to be about the influencing factors on those statements and those phrases. And you'll see what I mean here in the coming slides. So uh, ways to think about Outfit Wars, what this is about. Tools to talk about Outfit Wars is what this is about. It's not about what happened. It's not about where things went wrong. 
Next slide. Working definitions. I'll, I mean, a lot of us already know these definitions. I decided for my own clarity that I was going to put it all down on paper just to make sure that I had it in my mind what was, what was going on. And the only ones I really wanted to go over, so Planet Side 2, Open World Definition, uh, MMO, Massively Multiplayer Online Games, Third or First Person Shooter, Closed World, MBG stands for Match Based Games, RPG, Role Playing Games, RTS, Real Time Strategy. What is live? So live is, I mean, if you're a PS2 player, you know what live is. It's the main MMO portion of the game. Jaeger. Jaeger is a limited access server used for special events. A lot of PSB goes on, on Jaeger now. It used to be test server way back in the day, but now it's on, on Jaeger. Outfit Wars. 1v1v1, point-based tournament system on Desolation. Uh, the Campaign which is a time-sensitive event permitting players to accomplish specific lore-based quests while on live. And then here's some of the things that might matter. Uh, I had to just put a stake in the ground and, and talk about what, it, what I mean when I use these terms. Combined arms. It's the integrated use of all styles of gameplay found on Planet Side 2. We're talking tanks, vehicles, or that's the same thing. Vehicles, air, infantry, um, infiltrators, base builders, different styles of gameplay that you can use and experience in Planet Side 2. Like uh, uh, Banshee, for instance. You know, that all the different tools that the game offers you, using those tools, the integrated use of them is combined arms. Hardcore players. Hardcore outfits. Are outfits with a high membership or gameplay expectations. They might have a, a KD minimum or an IBI minimum. Or they might have, I think, uh, back, 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 way back when, Black Widow. I think it was Black Widow. Uh, Black Widow Company, BWC, used to have where you had, to, you had to log in for at least an hour every week. So that would be uh, an expectation. And then we have competitive. Competitive outfits. Those are outfits which prioritize winning or the factors leading to victory. There might be some overlap here, but by and large, uh, a hardcore outfit doesn't have to be a competitive outfit, and a competitive outfit doesn't have to be a hardcore outfit. A competitive outfit that isn't a hardcore outfit would be uh, an outfit that just gets together for outfit wars, and they're all really, really good players, and they're all really concerned about winning but they don't have any really expectations. You just need to be good. That might be an example of something. Uh, some of the alliances that popped up during Outfit Wars could be described as competitive, and, the one, and they dissolved right after, so they, I wouldn't exactly classify them as hardcore. We didn't know what they were. Some of them were casually uh, based. So then last but not least, here in the, the little bracket style of play is the casuals. Casual outfits have little to no membership or gameplay expectations. You just log in and play. And I'm in a casual outfit, as I mentioned, uh, being with the Devil Dogs uh, in C. Connery. And yeah, they, they do have expectations. You have to be 18 years of age, have a working microphone, or 16 age, whatever it may be. But the bar is pretty relatively low compared to hardcore. You're like, you know... You just show up and say, hey, I want to join as long as you meet like whatever minimum um, expectations, then you're in. Whereas hardcore, you have that bar, maybe tryouts, something like that. Yeah. And then here at the bottom, outfit sizes. That'll play a part in, in what we're talking about. Small outfits, I gauged at about one to a hundred members. There's some, there's quite a bit of degree of, of debate there it could be one to 50 members otherwise known as small fits a uh, medium outfits i tagged as 100 to 500 members mid fits and then large fits those with 500 or more members so those working definitions is when i use them this is what i mean right on 
So now we'll go into the genre heat map. So what I did was I kind of zoomed out and thought of where are we in relation to everybody else? And I just picked some of the, uh, the heavy hitters, Halo, first person shooter, Starcraft, WoW, and Conqueror's Blade. You might not know Conqueror's Blade. The reason why I include it is because they are pretty, they're a newer game and they, they fit a really nice niche. So I thought it'd be good to represent them. But what I did was I looked at it on a scale, on a spectrum of how are they in open world? How are they in closed world? What sort of, how are they in the massively multiplayer online realm? How much of their gameplay is match-based? How much is it is third or first person shooter? And then how much of it is real-time strategy? So it's not a, it's, it's not a zero sum as in open worlds, 100%, everything else has to be 0%. It's of its own element. How much of the game is representative of that? How much time does the player spend doing that? So for, for Halo, I mean, it's, it's pretty open world and closed world. It's definitely a match-based game. Like, I don't, th I don't know of any MMO element of Halo, uh, except for, like, yeah, I don't think there is that at all. You, you go into a lobby, you get in there, and then you get out. And that's what makes it match-based. It's called closed world and open world, so they have the broad match-baking system where you just get paired, and then you also have closed servers, which you can join. Uh, MMO, it, it isn't an MMO. It is 100% first person or third person, and it's not a real-time strategy. Whereas StarCraft, it is... I have closed world for some reason. It should also be open world. You can do the same thing with, with Halo, matchmake, or then uh, challenge someone to a match. It's not an MMO. It's a 100% match-based game, meaning you log in, you're in a lobby, you click the button, it gives you in, it brings you into a small instance, a small compartmentalized instance of the game. You're done and you get out. And then third person shooter, it's not, or first person, it's a real time strategy game. Wow is um, open world. It's an MMORPG, so it's definitely open world. I didn't think it was closed world or match based, but uh, when I had some some other content creators look at at these slides. One of them mentioned that Deke mentioned that in WoW Endgame, it's very closed world and very match based. I had no idea. I don't play WoW, so that was good. That was good to know. So that's why they're pretty high up on those. It's definitely an MMO and uh, first person, third person. Yes, it's not an RTS that I know of. And then Conqueror's Blade. It's an MMO RTS. It's pretty cool how they combine those two elements. It's it's almost exclusively open world. There is no real close world about it. It's definitely an MMO and it's match based, so you can go out in the world and also go into lobby like matchmaking system. It's third and first person shooter. There's a little bit of an RTS element to it. Uh, and being able to tell units where to go. So plan side two. Where are we in all of this? We are definitely open world. That's you know, pretty indisputed. It's mostly unrestricted gameplay, gameplay permitting players to exist in the same instance. It's only closed world a little bit, like Jaeger. Um, that, that's an example of a closed world. Outfit Wars now is now an example of closed world, but those don't happen very often. They only, the Jaeger events only happen for as often as people like PSB or, or Pill. Logistic Smash, that they actually put it together. It is an MMO, for sure. I think, excuse me, I think most people would, you know, they know that. It's continuous gameplay, played relatively unhindered after login, with very few out-of-game experiences. With the entry of Sanctuary, there's some debate now about that, but... You know, for the for the most part, it's still very much MMO match based. It it's pseudo match based. So it, I put that only because of the Jaeger events. You have a start stop, but Jaeger is a replication of live. Uh, so Outfit Wars now makes it match based, uh, just a little bit. 
And until they make it more persistent with everybody else, it'll stay just a little bit. Third person, first person shooter definitely is an RTS. So if you are a commander or a platoon leader, there's a certain RTS element when you look at the map and, and move pieces around the board. So he, over here on the right, that's the heat map. Uh, the, the heat map here, you can see where we are in terms and where the, the solid blue here. Uh, how close we are to first person shooter being almost exclusively first person, third person. Uh, very little match base here. MMO, very much so. Very, very little closed world stuff. And then in Jaeger's case, very pseudo cl closed world. Open world, absolutely. And then uh, RTS, very little of it, but you know, some, there's a little bit, some role playing game. Oops, forgot about the RPG part. Yeah, that should be reflected here, but it's not right now. So RPG, there, in Planet Side 2, there is now an RPG element, which is the campaign. And yeah, so I did this to mainly as part of a data point where we stand on the, on the whole thing. And yeah, so here's the heat map for Planet Side 2, applying what we just saw, the elements of an open world, closed world, MMO, match-based game, F FPS, RTS, and RPG, if I get dropped off there. How does that apply to us, Planet Side 2? So I have this little, uh, the four elements of, of Planet Side 2, which is live, Jaeger, Outfit Wars, and Campaign. Where do we stack up on all that stuff? And here's where we stack up, based on my own research and just sitting down and doing it live that's where you find the mmo portion uh, you go on live you play until you're done you log off uh, it's also open world very much so open world um, if you've ever played planet side 2 you know that jaeger actually let's wait on jaeger let's go to outfit wars yeah um outfit wars is now match based you hit accept, you get teleported to Desolation, you play the game, and you get out. And that's also what makes it a uh, closed world. The campaign is RPG, a uh, role-playing game. You, you play, you assume the identity of whoever that's supposed to be. I don't really remember if you have a name, but you, you assume the identity of your faction person. You report to someone, you go on quests, you go places. Except you do it in the open world. So there's that. And then Jaeger. I put a pseudo match base because if you played on Jaeger, you know that it's a, it's a live server. It just has limited access. Not every account can get on Jaeger. You have to have a specific account. Um, so that's why I call it pseudo match base because when you get in, then there's a start and stop of when the, when the match starts and stops. You just you know log in, log out like you would in a regular MMO. And of course, all of it is FPS. And then there's that RTS element, that, that small little RTS portion uh, doesn't really play into the campaign at all. So that's why you see what you see here. So this is where really the meat of all of this comes into play, which is where do we stand? And this... What you're looking at right now definitely affects that Rorschach test that Deke was talking about. It definitely affects what, what we talk about, how we look at the world. And to illustrate that, player identity. So the type of player that comes to this game and interacts, we're from all across the spectrum. As I mentioned uh, the definitions earlier, the, the competitive side, um, the hardcore side, the casual side. Player identity plays a part into how you, how I talk about stuff, how I look at stuff, what I perceive when I see something. Some people react really, really strongly to things that other people don't react very strongly to. And what you can see here on the right is... If you go into the game right now, you can see what it was that I was, why I, why I have these specializations and classifi 
classifications. Outfits are the, the heart of the game. The communities around outfits are the type of players that you are and that you play with. And the game itself has its own classification system, its own specialization uh, under the outfit browser that categorizes all the outfits already. As you can see, you, if you go into the outfit browser, you can say, hey, I want to look at all the casual outfits. I want to look at all the casual outfits that are combined arms that are over 500. And then you'll see that list. Or, hey, I'm a, I'm a competitive player. I want to win. And I only want to win with infantry players. And, you know, maybe a small fit from 1 to 20. Or maybe some of the, the mid-fits out there. Or, hey, I'm a hardcore player. I want rigid structure and discipline. And if anybody gets out of line, they get whacked. Hardcore. I only want to do that with aircraft people. You know, Reavers, ESFs, whatever whatever faction you're from. And I don't care to play with a lot of people, so maybe 20 to 50. And down here at the bottom, when you select that outfit, you'll see how many people are online versus how many they have, what their specialization is, and what their classification is. That can give you a pretty good idea, other than the description, of where they fall onto the spectrum of who they are, what they value, what they prioritize. And, and as, a, as a cluster, as a grouping of players, you can you see a lot of similar viewpoints from some of the same outfits. And yeah, Outfit Wars brings all of those outfits, different classifications, different specializations together in the same instanced match in a tournament-like system. Kind of like the old service match did with the, uh, with the servers, like Pill did, like uh, the old community clashes. There's, yeah, there, it takes it from the ambiguity uh, that you find in life, where all of these people are randomly across the map, wherever they are, into a confrontation, a head-on, the uh, head-to-head match, and you can't avoid them. You have to fight. That causes a lot of... The differences between the outfits are never more apparent than when that is going down, when Outfit Wars is going down. And that's one of the reasons why you see such controversy, such discussion and difference of play becoming so magnified. Because you're seeing how one outfit plays really hardcore. They are... You can tell the discipline and the, the hours of work that went into how even to clear a room, how to look go through a room. Or the other outfits that are more loosey goosey. They, they their command structure is, you know, more reactive or or they hit with one hammer, one fist rather than just sprawling out in, in different divisions. You can tell. You can see the difference. And who goes into all these outfits? Well, here on the left. And um, props to Deeg for, for mentioning this in one of his earlier Basement Side Weeklies that he did. Uh, he, he had a segment about, it was a game developer. I can't remember if it was RuneScape or, or someone um, who was fairly well known in, in, their, in their sphere. Talk about player types. And he mentioned a Bartle player. And I had never heard of a Bartle player. So... I looked it up, and it, it's like a personality, um, like Myers Briggs, like the uh, the Big Five personality types. Bartle is a gamer's look on personality types. So Bartle, I believe that was his actual name too. Bartle, Bartle types. It doesn't say uh, Richard Bartle. There we go. So what Richard Bartle said is you, ha you basically have four types of gamers. You have the killers, the achievers, the explorers, and the socializers. And I was looking in, in this photo came from Date Night Gaming, of all places. Really cool, so I included it. This overlay here, these guardian achievers, artisan killer, idealist socializer, rational explorer, those I got from, from Game of Sutra. And 
which had a actually I'll bring it up. Yeah, here you go. So Gama Sutra here had this big long write up and actually a really good write up because it also compares to the other personality type tests that you can take. But it talks about who these players are, where they fall. And so killers. Killers are typically people who want to act on different players. They want to interfere, call it. They want to uh, interact. But they basically want to, well, that's why they call them killers, kill. <laughs> but they want to act on other players. Then you have, uh, in contrast to that, you have the socializers. They want to experience with other players. They want to interact with other players. They want to form relationships and, and tell stories. Then you have on the top right there, the achievers. They generally want to accumulate. They want to gather. That, whether that's gathering achievements, uh, titles. Excuse me. They want to achieve. And down there at the bottom right, the explorers, they want to discover. They want to go out and explore, see what's out there, touch, feel, and interact with the game. So pillars and explorers are, are opposites from one another. Uh, pillars want to interact with the players. Explorers want to interact with the game. Socializers want to form relationships. Pillars aren't necessarily quite so interested in relationships. Um, except the relationship that they have you on the other end of their goss rifle, maybe, or the, <laughs> and then the achievers, they want to progress through the game. So these little overlays here, um, the ISTP, ESTP, ESTJ, those are Myers-Briggs, the MPD, MBTI. And as you can see, they call them different things, so let's call ISTJ is the commander. Oh, excuse me, the, the logistician is the ISTJ here on 16 personalities, whereas on Truity, it is the inspector. So there's different labels, categories on the MBTI and how it is, but basically, here's the map between the Bartle, here's the MBTI, uh, the Guardian Achiever Logistical, I believe, is part of uh, Kiersey. and But here's how you can kind of look from the perspective of who am I? Where do I fall in this? And then who do I play with? So if you're, if you're a killer, you might be a bit more competitive or hardcore than you would be casual. You don't have to be, but generally speaking... I don't think it's unreasonable to say that. And I don't know of many killers that are armor players. I'm an armor player myself, but a lot of killers I found are infantry or aircraft. Uh, the dogfighting in, with ESFs is real. I'm not good at that at all, but I, I know that that, you know, that Top Gun game is that's, that's alive and well. And then you know, small fits, mid fits, large fits, there might not be overlap there. There are a lot of large fit casuals. I think most large fits are casuals. I'm not aware of any that have over 500 that are competitive or hardcore, but if I were to peek in game, depending on the server, there might be. Let's see. So player identity. The reason why I bring it up here is, first of all, what type of player are you? That that plays a part into who you play with. And the second question is, what type of player do you want to play with? What type of outfit do you want to play with? All of that sets into a... All of that sets into a... It sets up what, what happened during Outfit Wars. Uh, the types of players that you find, the killers, the achievers, the explorers, the socializers, what they were all saying. 
you could be multiple, but in terms of framing the conversation and, and the tools of thinking about how this is going down, this was really helpful for me. And I decided to just talk about it. So hopefully it's helpful for you. So then how do I apply this? How do we apply this to uh, the ongoing conversation? So then I decided to put it all together. The PS2, the genre heat map, the PS2 heat map, and now the Bartle heat map. So these are all overlaid on each other. So we've got live, Jaeger, Outfit Wars, and Campaign. And I really came down to how, how does that map together? Well, for live, based on my experience and what I've seen, is live has a lot of the socializers and the explorers. The MMO portion of live really, really goes to the people who want to explore the MMO world and the people who want to play the game for fun. There are definite killers on the map. I mean, Aflick, for one, has the god saw, and he's just a monster. But I, he's, and he used to be a socializer back when he was um, Vax and VCO, a uh, voodoo company. But he's a killer now. He's definitely a killer. But the killer portion I found, and, and for those of you who used to know Scourge of the Server, was a killer. There are many killers, but there are many more socializers. You know, big grug, little grug, as Sirius says. There are more little grugs than there are big grugs, and that's one of the things that the little grugs have going for them. They can overwhelm the big grugs. Um, so they take up uh, a larger portion of live play than the killers do. The achievers also exist. They, you know, getting certs, getting ASPs, unlocking stuff. Uh, Chuck Baller, for instance, has unlocked almost every item in the game. Chuck does it because he loves the game. And shout out to Chuck Baller. Love you, man. You're, you're a huge force for good in this community. And Chuck Baller has unlocked everything. Part of that is because I think he's an achiever. The other part, he's a huge socializer. He loves the game. He's been streaming for a long time. Loves the game. Um, so there's, you know, there's that. And the campaign now also has an achieving element to it. How fast can people, <laughs> how fast can people uh, complete the campaign and unlock the stuff? So there's that. Um, but then you also have you know, the campaign side here. Definite achiever. It, it definitely invites the achiever to come play. On the socializer, there isn't really a, a big socializing aspect to campaign, although for this last campaign on Esomir, you di there was a little bit of it, you know, as, as you sat down and whether you were trying to find the, the storm spot with the rate and with the little handheld thing or at the very, very last mission when you all had to go to that that loner facility way off in the shattered you there was some socializing that took part there and the explorers now that i think about it the explorers might it should probably be a little bit bigger because part of the campaign is you know exploring esamir and finding stuff but it's definitely have a, a big achiever lean to it and you have jaeger the closed event match based pseudo match based system the achievers, uh, the reason why I put the achiever as, as second biggest is if you remember back in the early days of Server Smash, even Pill, uh, having those bragging rights of winning your server, like Miller beating uh, Cobalt or Emerald beating Connery, Briggs winning everything, there's definitely an achieving bent there of, of having the, the bragging rights, the being able to say that my one there, there's definitely that socializers. You didn't really have a whole lot of socializing in, in that it was quite hardcore. And, and that was part of the difficulties we had as PSB admins that how do we manage that? How do we not make it to just, you know, becomes an MLG event. And it was just, it was a hard fought battle. So you didn't really see a lot of socializers there. You did see a lot of killers. Um, and, and part of the fairness doctrine tried to, to, combat some of that but the killers were well represented in in jaeger events and you see that most with pill right now
Yeah. Definite killers. And then we have Outfit Wars, the newest addition to the bunch. Killers, from what I saw, are still very well represented in Outfit Wars. Um, that might even be far bigger than what I put it as um, because of the ringers that, that went down. But no matter how that played out, the killers were definitely represented. There is some socializing, more so than Jaeger I saw, and that it came down to the inclusion of outfits in that compartmentalized space. You came in as an outfit, you left as an outfit, whereas something like Service Mash, you came in as a server. Uh, pill that might be less relevant, but definitely saw more of a socializing aspect, the relationships. Uh, and in Outfit Wars' case, there was a lot of negativity surrounding that, that relationship because it was so controversial in many ways. But you also saw a lot of positive things, a, a lot of, of alliance building, a lot of positive interactions. Um, people interacting with people they never really, they never would have needed to interact with, and and it wasn't all bad for sure. It was there was a lot of good that came out of it. And it's an alpha, so it's still very much trying to trying to find its place. So there's some socializing, excuse me, in that match based realm, and also some achieving. I put a little bit less because the the bragging rights just they were there for sure. The bronze, gold, silver sort of thing. But it wasn't quite so... I didn't quite see the, the Achiever aspect like I did out of Server Smash, like I did out of the other Jaeger events. So it's still there. But as you can see here, and this is all based on my opinion, based on what I've seen, you're welcome to do your own. And, and tell me about it in a look. But this is what I see. The, the four main aspects of Planet Side. Live, Jaeger, Campaign, Outfit Wars, how the genres map on to those four elements, FPS being dead center and closed world, open world, MMO being on live, RPG being campaign and match base being on Jaeger, uh, Outfit Wars, how your identity ends up being spread across those four elements and how your identity is spread. You can, if you look at the conversations that happen, um, and you classify them as this is a live conversation. This was a Jaeger conversation. Uh, this was an Outfit Wars conversation. This is a campaign. You can kind of m start mapping who is in it and where they fall on this on this spectrum. It's not a one for one for sure. It, and this isn't a crystal ball like someone talking about live. They're they're most likely. Um, someone talking on Jaeger, that they have to be a killer. No. Uh, think of it as kind of like a percentage-based thing. Whereas most of the time, uh, I'm seeing a lot of, well, Reddit might be different, bad example, but uh, a lot of the time you're dealing with socializers or explorers. There's some killers, and their voices are very loud because of how much they achieve. Um, but ultimately, you can kind of see how this plays into the discussion, how... It's not a surprise for for Jaeger, for Outfit Wars. You see a lot of hardcore type players. A lot of competitive players. Whereas on live, I mean, you have a lot of people who are more casual in those conversations. In the campaign discussions, you see a lot of achievers talking. So, yeah, I thought that was really interesting as I was putting it together. Um, that's what I found. And that's what I want to share here. Yeah. That's what I found. And that's what I'm sharing here. And you could disagree. Please feel free to, to ask questions or, you know, hey, I, th I think this or that. Yeah, this is... These are some of the tools now that I'm, I'm offering... For, for you as you think about what's happening. So before I even get into that slide, that's really the meat of everything of this whole of this whole conversation is the genre heat map, how we fit into other games and the open world, closed world RPG uh, network here, the heat map, then how 
that genre heat map maps onto the plan side two heat map where where Jaeger outfit wars falls into the closed world match based system how FPS RTS is prevalent throughout everything except really the campaign how live is very much an MMO open world campaign is a RPG that takes place in the open world and then the player types how you how I as a player who plays planet side where I fall onto this spectrum I'm I'm probably more of um I, I like exploring. I like achieving. Uh, I do like killing, but I'm not like I'm not spectacular at it. You mainly see me killing in a vanguard. I'm, I'm most definitely a vanguard player, but I'm more the strategic, rational explorer side with a little bit of logistics thrown in. Um, I'm definitely a casual player, although I I mean I just don't play enough to be competitive. So, but I would like to be competitive. But I'm probably right here, and it's not. It's not a surprise then that I fall under the casual. I fall, I love, I love how the different parts of Plant Side come together. No, you're listening while playing on Emerald. Yeah, right on. <laughs> so, how a casual, I love combined arms, and I really love how those combined arms fits over a large amount of players. And now I ended up with the Devil Dogs. So, the classification was why. I play, why you play. Uh, the specialization is how I play. I love playing combined arms, like I mentioned. And then the, the member side is the, the large outfit. I love being in large outfits. Just the, the power behind that engine is, is awesome. I don't think I mentioned that, the outfit browser. The classification tells you generally why you play, why someone plays. Plus, specialization tells you how they like to play, whether they're infantry, they like being in ES, uh, MBTs, Lightning, Sunders, aircraft, you know, whether they like being in ESFs, combined arms, whether they like being in anything, everything, or whether they like interacting with anything and everything. I don't really know what other was, so I just decided not to include it. But that's how you can see how it maps onto the different elements of planet side. And now we'll get into the last part, which is applying all of that to the conversations. There, there's more conversations and more suggestions that I could fit on a slide. So what I did was I took a, some of the most prevalent ones I saw. I thought up of my own as well, and I put them down here. And I'm going to just kind of speed right through it. Um, I don't really want to go into depth because so many people uh, have gone into depth already. Like Shock Tour um, has gone into depth a lot with Commander Sirius. And Deeg has also gone in quite a bit of depth, as is uh, Commander Spock and Kamikaze. They've gone into this stuff far more than than I'm prepared to. But you know, my big thing is you know, transform it to one v one. But that's all coming from my perspective. And as you can see, I'm a socializer. Um, I, th I thought it should be going to one v one. And I saw a lot of killer type players also say, we want to one we one uh, If you're an achiever, then I, when I typically saw people talk about tiered rewards, I can't remember who mentioned that. What was that? Oh, that was during uh, Sirius's talk. Uh, the tiered rewards. And I believe Commander Spock mentioned this as well. Competitive matches getting greater rewards. Um, Achievers. I'm not surprised that I saw a number of achievers talking about that in the Reddit threads. Quality of life stuff. Uh, schedule the matches during the weekday or, or Saturday, Sunday. Uh, selectively queue up and, and just kind of throw the gauntlet down on, on other outfits. That was, you know, a socializer thing. The Explorers definitely talked about tailored matches of like Max versus Max, Air versus Air, Air uh, as did the Killers. And incorporating the 6v6, 24v24, 12v12s, kind of like a pill style sort of thing. Uh, not surprised to see a lot of killers talking about that, as is the achievers altering the mount outfit wars match order, where they started with gold first during this outfit 03, uh, alpha 3 was gold, then silver, then bronze. I probably should have done it the other way, but 
you know, that's that's nitpicking here at this point. And then, um, as a side note, as a caster, uh, they overlap so much that we couldn't cast all three events. Um, we we already cast all of gold, but when we were done with gold, silver was already halfway done. Um, yeah, the quarter done, and by the time we got through silver, bronze is already halfway done. So, I'd say as a, as a casting moment, probably not make them overlap, but you know what? I'm sure there was some logic behind that. But in any case, the achievers talking about the way the things went down and getting your rewards. So when it comes to the discussions taking place, people offering solutions, people offering their own perspectives, and then the outright conflicts, uh, controversy that have happened, it's not a surprise that there's so much spirited debate over what should be done because so many parts of the game people are coming at it from different perspectives and those perspectives here and you can call it the you know the big 5 openness all that sort of stuff or MBTIs whether you're you know ISTJ or ENFP whether you're a killer whether you're an explorer achiever whatever the case may be casual competitive hardcore your perspective probably not surprisingly, plays a big part in what do you think should happen. But because of that that uncertainty that I mentioned in the very beginning, we don't know really what Outfit Wars is for, who it's for. Uh, there's been a little bit of clarification on, on behalf of the dev team, but it didn't really, it didn't really settle the matter. Uh, there, there was no definitive... At one point, Rel said that it was to reflect live play, which, depending on your perspective, inconsistent with how it actually turned out and what the incentives and disincentives were for how things were played. But in any case, it's not clear. Not clear. So that invites that Rorschach test. It magnifies it in such a way that the the conversations are just crazy. Um, a lot of debates, bad blood, and just there's good blood too. But if you've been connected and plugged in, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah. When you hear the different stuff that's happening, the good, the bad... They should change this. They should leave it alone. Take a look at what your perspective is and then maybe the perspective of someone else and understand that you're, you're coming at it from different angles and that's okay. That, it's allowed to happen. But when you were doing it in live, it was much more zoomed out. Doing it here in Outfit Wars where everything is so um, 1v1v1, it's in your face. Everything is just magnified. So, in summary, some of the things we went over is Planet Side 2 is mostly open world, MMO, third FPS, or third person or, or first person shooter. It has some closed world, some match based elements to it, some RTS elements. Live play caters more toward the socializers and the explorers due to the MMO aspect, the open world aspect. Outfit Wars, from my, my opinion, caters more toward the killers in the game uh, through the closed world match base system. Campaigns tend to cater more toward the achievers through the, the role-playing game quests. And Jaeger, the, the closed world Pseudo match based caters more toward the killers and the achievers uh, through the special special events. Based on how you play, why you play, with whom you play, your lens on Outfit Wars is going to be different. And what I really wanted to highlight is that that difference is.
those tweaks, your perspective makes the most difference. It's not, should we change this? Should we change that? It's, uh, why do you want that changed? Why does that player want that changed? And if you trace it back, generally it's because of how they play, why they play, with whom they play. Uh, Commander Spock's response to uh, Commander Sirius, uh, both were really well done. Uh, presented two different perspectives, uh, and then Jacques Torres presented a third, Archie's presented a fourth. We all had different perspectives, and the, the little tweaks that may happen from Alpha 3 to Alpha 4, they may make a difference, but your perspective is going to make the biggest difference. And your perspective will, yeah, going to make the most difference. So the whole reason why I did this is to present this info, to hand it over and say, here's what I found. Here's what the data points that I've put together that I think are important here. Please use it to form a more complete opinion. Please use it to just do whatever with. And yeah, when you ask yourself, what goal does Outfit Wars fulfill? I hope you do so now uh, with the recognition of where you fall on the spectrum of things and where the people around you fall. And hopefully at the end of it, we have better conversations. We have productive, positive conversations. And we can all move forward as a community. And that's why I'm doing this. So, yeah, I really didn't rehearse how I would end it. I just came to the summary and then decided to transition to past and upcoming. My, I've been in this community for a long time eight, nine years now. And I've seen most, most of the stuff that happened. The ups and the downs, the good, the bad, the positive, negative. We have our own way of doing things for, as plant side community. That's for sure. We have things that we care about, things that we don't care about as much. And I really want there to be good, positive relationships as much as possible. And that a lot of players, even outfits that I used to hate, uh, I didn't understand them. And when I got to understand them more, I always use Future Crew as an example. I used to hate Future Crew back in 2012 to 13, 14, right about when I co-founded Server Smash and Future Crew started playing with uh, Server Smash. And I had to interact with them. And Shock and Tal and... When I got to know them better, just by virtue of organizing with them, when I organized the matches, I got to know them, and they are cool people. They are, I really enjoyed being around them. Um, they, their style of play wasn't my style of play, and that's okay. But at, after I got to know them a bit better, I really came to respect them. And coming from as a casual player, uh, what I would consider to be the opposite there was a, we had a lot more similarities than I thought, and they're just we're all people, and whether you have a KD of ten thousand or KD of point one, uh, we're all people. We play the game uh, for different reasons, and that's okay for those reasons to exist that aren't the same. So that's just a moment of you know insight into all those years. My hope. And all the contributions I've made, as much as I could, have been primarily to try and better the community, to try and offer something that creates a positive effect. That's, that's my goal. That's why I, I love doing these sorts of things and why I loved doing PSB uh, events and, and writing all those articles and doing different casting events, going on esports talk shows, it's, I really want the community, I love this game, and I want the community to be a good place, a welcoming place. And I think this is my way of contributing to that now, in 2021. So, over here on the left, here are the things that 
that I did. Uh, Strat side one is what I ended up calling the EG7 Day Rig RPG Planet side interactive discussion that Arshi and I had two weeks ago. Here are the here's the slide link, and then here's the VOD link. And today we just did the next Outfit Wars. So how to think about its identity, different tools to think about its identity. Hopefully it helps. Take the best of it, and then you know discard the worst of it. Uh, whatever, whatever you whatever you want to do there. And then here's stuff that I have that I think is going to be upcoming. Here in June, I'm doing a Community Manager 2021 edition. It'll be kind of modeled after the Reddit post that I made not long ago uh, that was well, well received. So I'm going to be doing a you know, Google Slides-like version of that. Um, day one in the seat and beyond. Um, spoiler alert, I'm not after Mithril's job. Congratulations to Mithril, by the way. He is now the community manager for Planside 2. Wishing the best of luck. And if you're watching this myth rule, please get in touch with me however you can. I've, I've tried to get in touch with you. I'd like to offer uh, some volunteer services because I, I think I have some, some good ideas of how to make the community better and then some ways to offer some, some help on how to strengthen the the our community. And I want to help you do that. Um, just want to learn and talk to you. So I'll be going over a lot of the Reddit post, but in slide format with some more additions since then of things uh, day one in the seat of the community manager and beyond. Then in August, I'll be doing something, the, the game designer edition of that. Uh, that. That Reddit post was even more well-received than the one I made about the community manager. So I'll end up doing an, an August one, even though I have no resume experience, as I mentioned in the Reddit post. I, I, I can't do that job. Rel, they, they're great at that, and I cannot do it unless I were to learn how. But there's definitely some things I've noticed over the years. Things, Some of them look like they're, they're softballs, but others probably more intense. Um, so in, in slide format as well. In August, I've been, you saw some of the, the discussion today about the MMOs and the MBGs, the match-based games. I love talking about this sort of thing. I've done quite a number of gaming articles on it in MMOgames.com and Gamersphere um, years ago, but how these mechanisms play into gaming in general and the PS2 meta I'm probably going to end up doing a, a discussion like this on how MMOs and MBGs play into PS2. And in September, I'll do something along the lines of Elite Fits and Zerg Fits, what they are and what they aren't. I've, yeah, there's, this has been a thing since I can remember, since beta. Um, the discussion of Elite Fits and Zerg Fits, it's still very similar to what it was back in 2012, uh, the way it's talked about, the way each group is talked about, and I really want to take a crack at offering a data-based perspective, excuse me, a, a business case type perspective on what they are and what they aren't. So as I develop it, this is almost done. I'm, I'm getting pretty close to finishing it. So I'm, I'm probably, I'm on track to doing it in June. And that's the end. That's, yeah. That was fun. I only rehearsed a little bit of this. I basically went over the, the basic outline of what I wanted to say. A lot of this is based on my own perspective, my own experience, uh, what the next outfit was, how to talk about it, how, what its place is. So when we do have the next outfit wars, Hopefully you can talk about it, uh, use the best of what I've talked about, and integrate it into your own discussions. So that is, yeah, that's, I think that's where I'll leave it. I appreciate everyone's time, and don't see any questions from the live Twitch. So what I'll end up doing is just cutting it here, and then, yeah, make it available on VOD. So 
Hope you all have a great day. Love Planet Side 2 community. Rock on. <laughs> right on. For those of you who are still here listening, Twitch Studio Beta, I'm really impressed with, with this program. It definitely makes streaming a lot easier. The thing the problem I had with OBS, the reason why I couldn't stream, is because I couldn't get my settings right, no matter how many experts I consulted. Thanks for following, Gnome. <laughs> and no matter how many I consulted, couldn't figure it out. Twitch Studio Beta came comes along, kind of does it all for me, Opt and I hit the optimize button, and it just works. So brilliant, love it. Uh, so if you have streaming problems as well, I recommend go check out Twitch Studio Beta. It it's got the chat integrated into it, the activity feed, and it's just it's really cool. There are some things that that it doesn't have that OBS does. Uh, you have to duplicate a lot of the same scenes. Um, they they don't share assets. So uh, something on starting one scene doesn't share an asset with the other one, whereas on OBS it does. But other than that, it's like very minor gimmick. And with seven seconds left, yeah. See you later, everybody. <laughs>